We addicted to fast cars, bad bras, late nights, last calls, alcohol, bad bad scrolling through the phone log. Welcome to Dubai, where luxury and adventure collide. From exquisite watches to fancy cars, our first time visit immerses us in extravagance. But Dubai is more than just glamour. It's a city of contrast with pristine beaches and vast deserts. Join us as we uncover the lavish and adventurous, making every moment count in this extraordinary playground. As a popular stop-off between the UK and Australia, myself and my boyfriend Aidan decided to spend an extended three-night layover in this fast-paced city. Having travelled for the last six months, we were definitely trying to stick to a budget while still enjoying the luxury that Dubai can offer. We're staying at the Five Jumeirah Village Hotel in Dubai for the next three nights and we're looking forward to exploring the city. just come out on our first day in Dubai. Yesterday was a bit of a write-off because we had an overnight flight and we basically just conked out at ATM, but we're up bright and early. We're taking a stroll around on a beautiful, lovely December. Oh, January day, we're in 2023. You haven't been to Dubai. Normally when you get an Uber in like Australia, for instance, you just get a, a normal, you know, a normal car, and you might get picked up by like a Camry or a Prius. Whereas here in Dubai, they're a little bit more premium, even the normal ones. Yesterday we had a Tesla, we got picked up in a Tesla. Today we had a Lexus, really nice leather seats, Lexus. And that's not even the, the exclusive ones where you can get picked up with even more prestigious cars. So it kind of plays into the whole thing here in Dubai where everything is kind of luxe. Um, I think the taxis are a little bit cheaper if you, if you want a cheaper way of um, getting around. They're a little bit more kind of what you would expect from a normal Uber in a, in a country like Australia. So we just stopped off at Blah Blah Beach Club to get some coffee and croissants, which was actually a pretty affordable way to do it. I think it was 90 dirhams for both of us. Beautiful beach club, definitely recommend right on the beach. Stunning views, good coffee. So yeah, we're just about to walk to the marina now. Um, we thought we were on the marina, but we were at like the JBR beach. Um, so we're gonna take about a half an hour walk there now. the Dubai Marina. There's not really very well signposted and we didn't have any internet but just walk over a couple of walkways. You cannot cross the road on foot unless there is like a proper crossing or you get fine for jaywalking but behind me now we've got the beautiful Dubai Marina. Stunning blue water like aqua blue. I, I didn't expect it to look like that but I think we're gonna head over to the Dubai Marina Mall as well. and we are currently quad biking in the desert so let's get a to Aiden. We're not quite sure what's going on. We don't know where we are. We've not been told to sit here and wait. They tried to get me to pay $50 each for us. We'll see if the reviews were a lie and this is a pile of camel poop. 
<laughs> yep, so you probably guessed right. This was in fact an interesting experience, which unfortunately I cannot recommend. Although I'm glad that we got to visit the Dubai desert, this company tricked us with some reviews which just didn't add up. This was supposed to be an authentic desert safari which included quad biking, traditional food and an evening show. And whilst it was a budget option, we trusted TripAdvisor reviews. But when in reality we were driven 90 minutes to a derelict sand dune which was anything but authentic. We were haggled for headscarves at 50 US dollars per person and it seemed like a cheaply run children's park. There was a hell of a lot of waiting around and at one point we were left for 30 minutes in the middle of nowhere. We were then driven off-roading to the evening Bedouin camp and this drive after the long wait was actually one of the highlights of the day as we did have some fun on the dunes but when arriving there was yet again additional charges to ride the camel. Arabian Nights. A whole 100 meter trip. Pretty hilarious actually. We did eventually get some drinks and food when we entered the evening venue. I don't know where we are. Where is this? <laughs> where are we? Planet. Adventure Planet Ooh. Tourism. Park thing. It is a park, really. Yeah, it's all like an amusement park thing. <laughs> the food was actually pretty decent and the alcohol was, of course, an additional charge. So we've got headscarves, which um, we did end up paying for in the end, but not $50. I think they were like 20 dirhams each, which I think is about five. 15 dirhams each. 15, no, they were 20. Oh yeah, 15 dirhams each. About how much? Like seven, five. Yeah, $7. $7 or seven so. $7.50. So much better than the other ones. And then we paid extra for a longer camel ride. But yeah, that upsell kings here. It wasn't cheap, this thing, but it wasn't expensive. Like it was like 110, $120 each. But they want you to spend money every time you get here. So we just got ourselves some Coronas. These were 35 dirhams each, which I think is about 15 Australian dollars. But I mean, it's to be expected in a country where it's very difficult for locals to buy alcohol. So we made the most of the situation, but it just shows that cheap isn't always cheerful. And if we were to go again, we would 100% spend extra on a more premium experience. It's like random lights everywhere. And yeah. Well, we're good. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, that, that every five minutes. Now you've got a mask on coming over. And, you know, a <laughs> yeah, and yeah, well, that's, that's that. <laughs> bit of a work and relaxation session where I was down by the pool living my best life but now we've got ready and we're about to head into the city of Dubai to see the famous Dubai Mall and Burj Khalifa of course. That was an incredible meal, but definitely too big, even though we did just have the lunch, uh, the lunchtime size. <laughs> Actually, yeah. <laughs> we finished that and we're walking it off by taking a look at all the beautiful design stores they have here. Tempted to buy stuff, but we can't fit it in our suitcase. I didn't know that much about the Dubai Mall, but there's literally an aquarium in the mall, so it's pretty cool. Now we're heading to the at the top, which is the 125th floor of the Burj Khalifa. I think it was about $100 per person. It's not actually. 
actually the highest point you could go but well the highest point actually you can't get to someone lives up there but i mean in terms of like viewing platforms there is one higher but at this time of day i think it was going to be like an extra 150 dollars each it was going to be like 250 dollars each which i don't care how tall it is i am not spending my money on that so we'll report back whether we think that we should have gone to the top or not but let's go have a look difference can it be hey probably not much it's, um, at a certain point it's just bloody high <laughs> Last morning in Dubai, we slowed it right down, checking out of our hotel and heading to the iconic Palm for a little rest and recovery before yet another overnight flight. As part of our hotel package, we can come to the five Jamira Beach Hotel, which is world famous for its club, beach clubs, and pools as well. So, we've taken our last day and we've come down to the Palm. Beautiful man made structure, and it's only been here really for the last decade or so. But taking in the site, we've got a beautiful view of the skyline as well, and not a cloud in the sky. So, perfect day to come and enjoy our last day in Dubai.